Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Orrstown, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Bill DeHass, Interim Pastor of the Congregation. This video is a shorter version of our in-person worship on December 4th, 2022, the second Sunday of Advent. Our worship this Sunday will be different as we will hold it with the residents and staff at the Orrstown Personal Care Home. O come, O come, great Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height, in ancient times once gave the law in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel will come to you, O Israel. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to Romans, the 15th chapter. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall, shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace from the one who was, who is, and who will come again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Not long ago, my wife and I were tied up in traffic on an interstate. Between an accident and heavy traffic, we were bumper to bumper with other vehicles and crawling along at a snail's pace. So I asked her to look at the Maps app on her cell phone and see what information we could get about what was ahead. The Maps app is good about showing how heavy traffic is and if there are problems, how long it might take to get through all of it. She said to me, what difference does it make we will get through it when we get through it. Nothing's going to change that. That is true. She's not wrong. But I have a different take on the situation. I said, it helps me because it gives me hope that we will, that it will resolve and it, and it keeps me from being too antsy. If I know it is going to be a half an hour, then I'm not going to get as worked up. Uh, and, and I know that things will resolve. Both of our opinions in that situation are valid, but different. I think about that as a metaphor for a lot of life. We don't know what is ahead of us specifically, and the future may seem bleak and even scary at times. One response to that can be in the words of the old Doris Day song, K sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. That's not untrue. I'm what will be, will be. I'm not sure how helpful that is, at least for me. I don't know about you, but I need hope 
and I need encouragement, and I need steadfastness. My guess is we all do. God provides just that and does so in a person, Jesus the Messiah. I love the words we hear today in Romans 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are beautiful words, and yet they were written to the churches in Rome that were at odds with each other. Disagreements in the church are not a new thing. They are as old as the, the first congregation. Specifically in Rome, it had to do with Christians who were Jewish by birth and Christians who were formerly pagans or Gentiles. The specifics of the disagreement of each group with the other is interesting, but way too detailed to get into today. Suffice it to say, they didn't care for one another and didn't regard the other as fully Christian. Among the aims of the book of Romans was Paul's intent to settle this rift and to have all Christians in Rome in unity with one another. They needed hope and they needed encouragement. And Paul was showing how God provides that both through the scriptures and through the fellowship that we share as God's people. Both can give us strength and encouragement through the ups and downs of life. Instead of differing voices from each church, Paul asks all of the Christians in Rome to join their voices together and glorify God with one voice. And then he says, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Welcome one another. Paul's concern here is deep. His understanding of welcome is more than just verbal. How about those highway signs that we used to see at the borders of our state? Welcome to Pennsylvania. Well, that's nice to hear, but I never actually experienced that when I drove into the state. Or what about when people put out a welcome mat at their front door? Do they really mean that? Paul, though, notes that all of the Christians in Rome had already been welcomed by Christ into a deep and abiding relationship with himself. As Paul writes, For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises made to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. God is both faithful to the covenant God made with Israel and at the same time, God's mercy and love extends to the rest of the world as well. Therefore, we are all connected with all of Christ's people. It's not possible to have a relationship with Jesus and then want nothing to do with others. When you get Jesus, you get all of his friends as well. Today, our congregation at St. Paul will be welcomed at the Orrstown Personal Care Home. We will be guests in their home. In turn, we will welcome the residents and staff to our worship today, as we will be with them, not just in name, but to join our voices together to glorify God, especially in the Christmas carols we will sing. We will also be with them as we share time in fellowship and gift giving after the worship is complete. Our worship, our fellowship, our song all point to the relationship we have with God together and to the relationship we have with one another. As we hear these words of scripture this morning, as we worship together, as we bear witness to our oneness in Jesus the Messiah, we await the celebration of the birth of our Savior. 
We do so with hope, with encouragement, and with fellowship with one another, not for our glory, but for the glory of God and for the life and eternal life we have from God through Jesus the Messiah and Lord. In the words of St. Paul, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. You give us a vision of creation in, in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in, in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones, especially those we name before you now from our hearts. You embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen.